What's that? No, not yet. Whoa. Whoa. It's the illusion. Reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. I wonder if do we have actually any connectivity? I can't really see that. Right there. Ooh, that's not working for me. There we go. Oh, we do have some connect. Oh yeah. Okay. Just chilling, drinking some coffee. We still don't have any Wi-Fi hooked up yet, but that's coming. We're just gonna, we're just doing it on the fly, old school style. So, um, I checked out that debacle with the uh, Elon Musk truck. <laughs> I think Ed Bassmaster says it best. <laughs> what a joke. What's up, bird? I don't know. Doesn't doesn't look very epic. I'm not I'm not uh I'm gonna laugh at the first fool I see driving around with that thing. It's really just a giant hoax. So yeah. The Elon Musk. What's it called? The cyber cyberpunk? Cyber truck. The name is just so stupid too. Elon Musk's marketing people aren't that bright. What's up, bird? Come here. Come here. Let me see your face. You have a cold? Do you have a cold? You're messed up? Come here. Come here. Let me see. Okay, you go wash your hands off. So yeah, that was uh that was interesting. I can't really read the uh it's tough on this deal because I can't really read the uh the oh here's some glasses right here. Let me see if this helps. Can't really read. Oh, now we're dialed in. Oh, bird's got a little cough action going. It's raining today. There's supposed to be a big rainstorm today, of course. And the hottest is, of course, that it's the moving day too. We got the moving truck showing up right in the middle of the rainstorm. So that's pretty rad. You got. You just gotta love the cosmic nature of that. That stuff doesn't really get me uh doesn't get me too freaked out. Yeah, I gotta actually I gotta actually go take this eye this eye thing kind of seriously. It's getting to be bad. Do you turn the light off when you're done in there? In the bathroom? Remember? Yeah. Putting him in charge of the lights. He's in charge of the light switches. That's the bird's new uh, new role, doors and light switches. You need a towel? All right. There you go. I, uh, da, 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 da. You should just go lay back down, dude. You don't look very good. You feel okay? Ah, this setup's so hoopty. We're dialing it in. This will be the last of the primitive podcasts in the echo chambers. But um, yeah, what else is going on? The kooks still out there? Have the, have the kooks left the planet? I went surfing yesterday, so I, I totally tuned out of Spaceship Earth. It was kind of rad. Big news is Lego bought Bricklink. 
more, more, more hurting. They, they can't even let leave the, uh, the Legoers, Legoers alone. Legos. I'm not allowed to talk about Legos? No, they're my stuff. Oh. I only talk about Legos to myself. You only talk to Le- about Legos to yourself? Yeah. Oh. I got you. How's that, how's that working for you? Do you feel that uh, you're communicating? You know it's really early, right, Bird, for you? It's going to rain today. You got you have your big, uh, your big, your big, uh, rain boots. We can go splash in the puddles later. What do you think about that? And is there going to be mud? There might be some mud. I bet we can go find some mud. Yeah, win- winter's here. Everyone's getting the flu or sick. Happy thanks the turkey day tomorrow. We're gonna we're gonna grill some food. I think we even have a uh, a guest coming over. Someone who doesn't have anywhere to be on Thanksgiving, so that that's cool. It's gonna be a pretty casual one. I think we're grilling grilling steaks. Yeah, that's right. We're grilling. My love I'm loving my new grill. I'm fired up about it. We're gonna make some grilling grilling videos. Anyone's got any good grilling tips, just uh, put them in the, the, the email down below. I'm not a big smoked meats kind of guy, dude. And smoking's not, I don't like smoking. That's a different, whole different game. I do like smoked, smoked fish though. I'll give you that. But uh, no, we've been, we've, been gr- we've been on the grill. I made some pretty good chicken last night or night before pretty far and we did you know vegetables on the skewers Mm. i don't i'm not i don't really care for trout i've never been a trout guy but smoke trout's pretty good do another skateboarding hill bomb vid dude i don't know my my hill bombing days might be over you can't have any hesitation about that stuff. I mean, did all my I haven't done a hill bomb since I had a child. I have to admit, like that one's different. Maybe I just take try. I'm just gonna go for bigger waves. Yeah, dude, I was seven years ago already. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, I like the hill bomber thing. It's uh, it's that thing, man. There's just no room for error. And then the hill bomber guys have taken it to such the next level now. It's it's almost that stuff they're doing in San Francisco. The hills they're bombing in San Francisco are so beyond my comprehension. I know some of those hills. I'm like, dude, I don't know. You use the mullet tutorial, Rory Black. Good for you, man. I'm stoked how to come out. No, hill bombings, there's no, it's not a broken bone issue. It's just potential death. Like just smacking your melon, you're out. You just gotta learn to, you gotta slide. Don't, don't run it out, man. Whatever you do, just don't think you can run it out, dude. Just straight up, just jump into your Superman. Wear some leathers. Leather. Let, let the cow save you. Daddy. Yeah, bird. Can we go back to bed, Daddy? You can, you can climb back into bed. But I want you. Okay, I'll come in in a little bit. Why don't you go get all cozy? You want me to put the uh, fireplace back on for you? All right, here, wait. Just one second. Bird wants to go back to get all snuggled back up again. What's that? I'll put the fireplace on.
forgot to turn the light off, bro. It's okay. Got it. Yeah, we got we got one of those fake fireplaces, dude. Like a full gas fireplace with the full 1970s, like, but it's kind of epic, actually. It's so it's so cheesy, it's rad. It's it's that kind of good. Cause we don't have any beds over here yet. Al and I have spent the last three nights camping in front of the in front of the uh, the fake fireplace. It's been pretty rad, actually. The final hurrah. We pick, I picked up, I, he's got his own room, dude. I'm gonna put him, he's got his own bed. I went and picked it up yesterday. Al's finally moving on up. The end of an era, if you will. I, I, the, 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 good, the bird's a good sleeper, man. Oh yeah, we're, we're way back, we're way deep. Smash the like button. Hey, Cal folks, seven. I was up in your neighborhood yesterday, man. I was uh, surfed like the middle. It was okay. It was a little. La it was just. It was a little off, dude. Hanson, Lily, smash that like button. Tip your tip your talker. Tip your talker. So I'm at. Everyone, I'm going to put up some, uh, once I get the Wi-Fi, I know I should have come by and said hello, but I was fully uh, on a surgical strike. I should have surfed way more in the south end, but I sort of surfed like middle south. I got a couple pieces. It just seemed to be like the better pieces were like where I wasn't, if you know, <laughs> it was one of those. It was one of those kind of surf sessions. Wherever, when the lips here, don't be there. <laughs> I was there. Uh, I was basically just farming it to 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 no end. Yeah, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit you up next time I'm up there, man. We go. You know, the hottest is I went over to Pepe's. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get a burrito after I served. Cash only. I was like, ah, oh. and it was that thing where I'm like, I'm that, I'm that Pavlog's dogged out where I don't actually have any cash in my wallet. I was like, that's so ridiculous. I was like, what would I do if the whole grid collapsed? I was like, throw, just use my credit card. I was like, I didn't, and I didn't have any food in my car. I was like, it was like one of those like post surf surf moments where I was like. So hungry, I'd surfed like three and a half hours. I was so hungry and I'm kind of choosy about my food. And I was like, dude, I got nothing, nothing. And then, and then I went and got stuck. And then I went and got stuck on the 101 and just full pile up. There was a pile up that shut down the freeway. So I was. I was eating Altoids. That's all I had to eat. I was just like, Altoids will, will take care of my hunger. I, I lived on Altoids. <laughs> full, full bad, bad, bad preparer. I, and I was like leaving. I was like, I should pack a lunch, man. But I was up so early, dude. Yeah, it's a long time ago, dude. Yeah, it was good. But I was I was surprised Pepe's is on the uh, cash only. It seemed bad, like a bad business model, especially with all those army dudes and Navy people around, man. It seems like they're all want to swipe with their Apple phones, right? <sighs> Nothing's for free. I mean, no one's giving away anything for free, dude. dude. Funny concept, taxes. Maybe. I like the lines on the middle of the road, dude. You just got to figure out the thing that you like paying for, dude. That's that's the thing. Like, if you're going to, like, let, let's be clear, dude, that the tax money just goes into a black hole. But spiritually speaking, you just got to find the thing that you 
are willing to pay for. Me personally, like when I send the tax money in, like we had a pretty good tax check we sent in this year. It's to pay for the lines in the middle of the road. Like that's what I justify my tax money going to is to pay for the lines in the middle of the road to keep the uh, oncoming traffic in their lane. You know, so, you know, another solid thing that tax money pays for is stop signs. Like imagine a world without stop signs, dude. So you just got to make some sort of peace with it. And if, you know, and if you're one of those, if you're a, a hater, you can, you can be like, I buy bombs to like destroy people picnicking on Sundays, dude. You know what I mean? Dude, I've been to Mexico and I've driven in Mexico, dude. And I'll tell you what, that's some of the sketchiest. I would, they, they would, they, their roads suck. Let's be clear. With the berms, you go down and like, if you ever have driven down Baja, the roads, there's no shoulder. It's just berm. So I was, I had this VW bus, right? I did this whole trip down to Cabo San Lucas and served for like a month in my VW bus, right? So the roads are like, like on, like, cause it's the desert and stuff. There's no shoulder and the berm is just the full 45 degree thing, like three or four feet down into the, into the desert. So when I was driving in my VW bus, the, the big 18 wheelers and buses and stuff, the big, big ones would come. And I was in my little VW bus combi van when the big trucks would come by down the road, there's no room for air. The wind would push my bus over to the side. And you know, you got the giant steering wheel. It would push my bus over to the side and it would almost go into the ditch. So I realized that, that when, the, when, the, when, the, uh, when the big trucks were coming, I had to turn at, <laughs> I had to aim my steering wheel in, right when the, like, Right when the big truck would come, I would turn my steering wheel right into the wind thing that the, the uh, jet stream it would cause. And I would have to aim at the, my, aim at the, <laughs> aim into oncoming traffic in order to compensate for how much I was going to get blown over when the, when the big trucks passed. It was so sketchy. I remember I was driving this one day. And there was like a, just a burned out car in the middle of the road, just like burnt, just a burned car frame. Like if you'd been driving at night, you would have just plowed into that thing. You never would have seen it. That's why you don't drive at night in the third world. And then there's this part that it used to be this way. It's not like that anymore. There used to be this part north of Guerrero Negro where the, it was everybody knew there was like some lunatic who would chuck, come out and like chuck rocks at cars. So you're, so you went, this was before all the GPS stuff. We just had a mile marker. And so at this mile marker, you would know that you had to drive as fast as you could because there was going to be some dude who was going to pop up and just start chucking rocks at your cars, dude. <laughs> Full Mad Max. And that was in the nineties, dude. God knows what it's like now. Now I think they just machine gun you down in your SUV with your children. Oh wait, that's the what? Well, that's somewhere else. Rock checkers, dude. Yeah, good times, dude. So yeah, I'll I'll gladly pay taxes for some some lines on the road and stop signs. I'm cool with that. I don't even mind paying for the cops, dude. Yeah, someone probably took out the rock throwing guy, I would suspect by now. That dude probably threw his rocks at the wrong car and they just straight just gunned him down. You know? But, uh, yeah. It's a little rainstorm. It'll be fun. Getting all the furniture here in a couple hours, dude. It's, it's 623. Just a distraction. No, it's it's a full video game. That's the thing, man. Everyone in their little cushy, cushy America thing. America's so bad. 
America. Mah. Just go cruise around in another country, dude, an impoverished country, and just like be like, oh, dude, this is full utopia. Yeah, we got our problems, dude. <laughs> Mostly social justice warriors, but you know, it's pretty cushy up here. I know, buddy. I know you are. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna give you some stuff here in a minute, okay? I'll give you some of the medicine. Then it'll break up the congestion. Mm. Oh yeah, we're super fortunate. And we're not at this, you know, but we're, that's the thing. I, I, I was listening to one of my, uh, Neil Kramer the other day. And again, it, it's the thing was where, where we're not fortunate is we've, we're so, we're so cushy up here. We've forgotten to take responsibility for our cushiness and like protect it. Like if we want to be all fat and sassy, dude, like we need to protect it like some sort of crazy craziness, but we're not. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, since how I, since I moved out of Malibu, I, I didn't realize what a third world nation Malibu was. I mean, I live over in the full, like super nice, clean. There's not a bunch of like crazy broken down RVs and homeless people and trash blowing around. Like you would trip like Malibu, California, right? Like enclave of the rich and famous. It's, it's really is, I, I've, I, I kind of thought about it. it. I put it this way. It's like, it's third world rich. It, it's something about Malibu is like the, uh, is like, it's third world rich. It's weird. It's like gated compounds. And outside of that, it's just like homeless people and trash and noise. Like now that I'm over in like a full, patriarchy neighborhood if you will it's pretty tame dude everybody's just minding their own business dude we got homeschoolers across the street there's children everywhere like riding their bikes and people out walking their dogs and i don't mean that in like a uh, a skin tone patriarchy way i just mean like like it's organized if the patriarchy is the problem like th then this is i'll i'll take this problem here a full safe clean neighborhood where you can fully like cruise around with your kids on the streets and like not worry about like some crazy homeless dude like jumping out of the bushes ah! like seriously that's malibu in 2019 like you go, go down to Zuma to go for a walk and there's just homeless people. Ah, zombies, dude. I noticed it yesterday. I was, we went up to the supermarket. Actually, actually my wife pointed it out. I was walking out of the supermarket and she's like, you know what's nice about being over here? And I'm like, I'm like, what? She's like, there's no, no homeless people outside the supermarket hassling us. And I was like, oh. Wow, you're right, man. We're not getting accosted walking out of the supermarket. Yeah, I'm fully entitled, dude. Let's be super clear. I have no, I've, I'm a full elitist on a certain level. And yet I'm fully like down for the freaks and the weirdos. But yeah. That whole like Malibu thing. I'm so, I'm so, I'm actually pretty fired up to be away from it, dude. Calfolk seven. My girlfriend keeps talking to me. Can't see I'm wearing earbuds, dude. You better, you better take those things out of your ear, dude. <laughs> Go talk to your old lady, man. <laughs> it's not the big Wednesday Malibu it once was. Well, the, you know that. Okay, I was because I, I was again working on the thing Malibu. 30 years ago was a full like working class neighborhood. They used to call Point Doom Poverty Point. It was all like contractors and electricians and, you know, people that worked at, at various, you know, Boeing and stuff. And, you know, they had, they, they lived out in their ranch house out in Malibu. Malibu used to be the sticks, you know? So there was a full, what I want to say is a redneck 
protectorate going on. Like up until the late 90s, there was all sorts of like sketchy characters in Malibu. Like there was all sorts of, but there wasn't any, like the celebrities that were there were there to like be low key and like hang out with sketchy rednecks basically. And so if you like, for example, I was talking about this the other day, if you were to have been speeding down like Doom Drive or something 30 years ago, you would have been chased down and possibly physically assaulted. Now the people who live there are the ones speeding down Doom Drive in, in their Range Rovers with no regard for the children. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, when Martin Sheen declared it a sanctuary for the homeless, dude. I didn't see them move, him moving any of them to his. He, you know, there's a story, Martin Sheen, and I believe... I'm not, I should leave the name out because I don't know for sure, but I, I would say that he, he brought in one of those sketchy homeless people and they fully like tried to like got crazy and he had to like have them evicted. People aren't, people generally aren't homeless because they aren't sketchy. Trust me, when I was homeless, dude, I was, I was, I had ran a pretty tight scene, but I was slightly sketchy. Wait, what's this? Was California has the highest poverty rate in the U.S. The wealth inequality of the Republic of Congo. I'm not. Look, I'm not. I, I'm not getting into that whole. I'm not seeing that. Like, yeah, San Francisco. You could argue is like out of control, but but there's plenty of people living in the in all sorts of California that would compare to that kind of money. Yeah, I, I get, I get it, Lily. Uh, but I think that that's a skewed thing. I mean, you could look at San Francisco. It's like one of the most expensive cities on the planet to live. Right. I think one of the top 10 for sure. And then you could be like someone who's living in the sticks of, you know, in some town in Northern California, minding their own business. Uh, it's, it's a tough, it's a skewed stat, I would say. I would say that the two big giant money leeches of, of Los Angeles and San Francisco Bay Area skew the results pretty heavily compared to the rest of the state. We are, yeah, we are in a cathedral. I'm in an empty house right now, essentially. Furniture is showing up today. But, uh, I don't know. That weird thing is like, there's definitely like some sketchy ness going on in California, dude. California's a wasteland, dude. California doesn't get a bad rap because it doesn't deserve it. California's a, a freaking wasteland, man. Like those of us who live here, like we know how to maneuver through the system. But if you were to show up in California, you would probably be sadly disappointed unless you were like 22 and moved to Hermosa Beach and you just wanted to get hammered at Sharky's, dude, and pick up on chicks. San Diego, pretty much the same place. But I, I would say that California is a, a tough gig, dude. Lots of traffic. And all the places that you would want to be that are super rad are kind of not at your fingertips, you know? Key to perfection is imperfection. This isn't imperfection. This is designed uncivilization. Like this is, like California is the, is the template for de-evolution. You remember that, you remember what they say? It starts in California first and then spreads, spreads east, dude. Yeah, San, San Diego's got that kind of a demographic. Personally, I, I don't, have anything to do with San Diego. It, in my book, look, you want my take on it all? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they should build the wall, the wall, the big wall they talk about. They should just build it on Interstate 10 right across the country. Everything south of Interstate 10, just give to Mexico. All of it, dude. Look at Interstate 10 on the map and just be like, would you be willing to give away that? Just to, just, but put the wall right down the interstate, man. 
Just one side of America, the border, the southern border of the United States of America should be Interstate 10. I've, I've thought long and hard about it, dude. <laughs> I know. People, people, on the other, people on the other side of that are like, what? Look, Maynard, I'll give it to this. Tool summed up California the whole way with anemia. Or an anemia, however you pronounce that song. Just better learn how to swim, dude. Palisas G, dude, it's been like this for a long time, dude. You must have just tuned in today, dude. Don't forget to tip your talker. Buy some t-shirts, Palisas. I like your security advice, but not your border suggestions. Yeah, because you live on the south side of Interstate 10. That's why. If you lived on the north side of Interstate 10, you would be like fully for it. Nothing but a wasteland on the south side of Interstate 10, dude. Those people are already surrendered to the cartels, dude. But I would say that. The creep. I think I think the I think as far as the government's concerned, a hundred miles in from the from the United States border is it's their their right to like police and patrol anyhow. So I don't, I don't even think it's a stre I don't even think it's really that much of a stretch to claim that that is the de facto border. When you really get down and down into it, but you know I'm an extremist, dude, and I I'm fully not a, not worried to admit it I think some drastic measures need to be need to be ta undertaken dude San Diego is pretty much a huge buffer zone yeah it is it's a giant wait, wait. what's the future of, of future of homelessness and, and there's nobody who's homeless in California dude there's they're shelterless and most of them are are suffering from some sort of medical issue ie insanity or drug addiction I, I, I that the yeah it's a drug epidemic zone exactly lawn gets it there's no it's not a homelessness issue we absorbed I think I think the city of Los Angeles absorbed 800,000 illegal immigrants last year. They're all, they all have homes. They're all under roofs. You know, you go down to, go down to Skid Row, dude. You'll, you know, there's one group of people that ain't there. I'll tell you that much. There's one demographic that's not, there's two demographics that aren't on Skid Row. The Asians aren't there and the Hispanics are not there. I wonder why, dude. You know what I mean? Both of them are are busy like busy like getting their shit together, dude. Oops, try to keep the profanity off this. An ASMR channel, yeah. No, the Asians are busy building their dreams and sending their money back to China. And the Hispanics are busy building their dreams, sending their money back to their village and wherever south of the border and good for them. You know what I mean? Like, hey, if they're, if they, they've obviously figured it out and everyone's bitching and moaning at the, oh, those guys. No, I, I, they're, they're fully like, they're smart, smart. That's all I can say, dude. They figured out the, the, the scam with the money and they're using it to their fullest ability, dude. Yeah, they have a good family network. You said it, dude. Hispanics and Asians both have strong family units, man. There you go again. What like that's why like that whole thing of people knocking our Hispanic brothers and sisters because I, I get a little touchy about that one because I I work I as a construction guy do the hardest working job dudes on any job site. 
are not white guys. Let me tell you that much, dude. No, wait, 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 someone home, Santa Barbara. Walk down the street in Santa Barbara and homeless people are screaming at me. Ah, I can't do this, wait, wait, ah. Yeah, that's insanity. Santa Barbara is a full homeless wasteland, dude. That scene down on, what, State Street? Uh. We were stuck up there after the fire for a little while, and it's like as sketchy as can be, dude. I, they just need to provide these people at least with some bathrooms, man. That's all I got to say. Bathrooms seem to be, would be a human right for all of us. Not even for them, for the rest of the population so we don't get infectious diseases. But that's extremist thinking again, dude, that people should, that their fecal matter ought to be contained. But, you know, no one wants to talk about that one, do they? Oh, don't talk about that. No, I think we're, I think we are, we are just rearranging deck chairs as the ship sinks all around us. Yeah, dude. Cheaper drugs for them so they can spend more, more on food. Yeah, right. I don't think that's going to happen, dude. They don't want your food, dude. They want your, your cash so they can buy the drugs of their choice. They, I would argue they don't even want your drugs. They just want the cash to go pay the person they're, they're in debt to. Yeah, the medieval diseases are coming back. Most people think that vaccines are the thing that, that have sa staved off diseases. You know what staved off diseases in the Western world? Sanitation, hygiene, that's, that's what's caused the decline of, of diseases. It's not the needles that everyone's sticking in their arms, dude. It's because we don't drink the poop. I mean, you look at like the old outbreaks and stuff, like you, you couldn't just drink well water. Things were dying in it and stuff, dude. Yeah, food, I, I didn't, when I was out of my mind, dude, food was way down the scale of priorities, dude. <laughs> food. That's what, that's, what, that's what Oreo cookies and Totino's pizza are for, dude. So th this is your basic alcoholic budget. Yeah, I got 20 bucks, dude. I'm going to go into the market. I'm going to get $18 in, in beer. I'm going to get $2 in food. Pretty much it. Pretty much it. And that two dollars in food is super unhealthy food because it's got to be on the cheap. They don't want food, dude. That's like that. Uh, that Will Smith kid took that vegan food truck down to the homeless people down there for his like stunt, like that he cares. Like that's to me is the one thing to prove that you don't care. Is to is to put a bunch of people with untrained bowel systems and just feed them vegan food talk about causing some some like dire situations for some people down there like people were probably hungry and they're like fine free food epic and then they went and chowed a bunch of vegan food and it just fully just did not react properly with their internal system and then they had emergencies and they, you know. Uh, what is this? What are you doing for the holiday? Food plans. David Lawson, thanks for the trucking, the trucking dough. Um, we're 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 gonna do. We're going to do some steaks. We're grilling. We're grilling. We're going to avoid the whole turkey fiasco. We're grilling. I think we're making some, some you know, some yams and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, a, it's more of a mean prank, right, Prince Ali? You get what I'm saying. It's like, if, if you wanted to, like, fully, like, feed homeless people that are spun out on drugs, dude, you would go down there with, like, heavy carbo foods dude that are gonna like a like stabilize 
be packed with like nutrients, not a bunch of like sketchy vegan food. It's just wrong, dude. Socks and underwear is not what they need either. I'm telling you, if you really wanted to be a hero to, to the people that are in this situation down there, and some, you, would, you would send a fleet of those high-end portable bathrooms with showers and stuff and, and, and make sure they had clean facilities to, to, to defecate in. That's what you, if you wanted to do anything, if you had a million bucks, if I had a million bucks right now and I was going to dedicate it to helping the spun out crazy drug addicts in downtown LA, I would send armed toilets down there and with armed security and letting people use the toilet, not hang out in there and shoot junk. Just, you want to go use the toilet, armed security with like cleaners there and just full humane bathrooms dude that's my whole one of my giant things about like life is is bathrooms are are, are should be a human right if you want to talk about health care as a human right start at the start at the bottom literally the first human right should be a clean area with sanitation that you can discharge your vehicle matter human right number one dude because the other stuff's God-given rights. Food, water, air. That's God-given rights. Human rights, the rights that humans, we all should give each other, is a clean place to, to, to use. I, I go on and on for hours about fecal matter, dude. It's a real problem in our society. It's a real problem on the planet, dude. And it's not being addressed. And you know what's the old, like, unfortunately, the only jerk off, like, truly ad adjusting it is Bill Gates. What? Oh, the stuff? Here, wait one second. Here. But yeah, the only guy who's actually doing anything about it is, is the Gates Foundation, which... Ugh. Your one's in the fridge right here. Here. Here, you can go sit by the fire and drink this. Go sit by the fire and drink this. There you go. Okay? Here, take that. Both hands. What? There you go. All right? Like, yeah, we do, like on a worldwide stage, we do need to address this issue. I, I, I that was, the, I, wa I did watch on Netflix, I did watch the Bill Gates documentary, and it's a pretty good piece of propaganda because you're like, oh, yeah, dude. But like, when you see the innovative thing with the, like, the new toilets and stuff, no, I, I don't want to ever see a bathroom in India. That's the main reason I would never want to go to India. I, the third world bathrooms horrify me, dude. That whole concept. South, like, Central and South America's, like, just got just enough bathroom to, like, you know? No. Well, if you owned a McDonald's down there, yeah, you wouldn't either, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's again. That's what we, our tax dollars are supposed to pay for, dude. I, again, if you want to talk about what tax dollars, that's an, a, a pharmaceutical industry. The only thing that I like, it's funny. The, I, I'll go, you know, who fully said something I 100% agree with is Kamala Harris, dude, the other day. And, and there's nothing about that human being that I agree with. But when she said they ought to pull the patents from the pharmaceutical industry for the drugs, I was like, yeah, I'm a full anti-patent kind of guy, dude. I think the patent scam has held back humanity 
to the level of, of, of de-evolution, dude. I, so I was like, I heard that and I was like, I like what you're saying. I th- like, I won't, I would never like, that's about all that's going to come out of her mouth that I approve of. And people are like, oh my God, free market in this area. No, the United States government ought to pull the patents. And especially if it's been funded by federal dollars, dude, like enough. Patents aren't human motivators, dude. Patents are slavery, dude. Again, that's based upon the whole thing of the interest-bearing currency, dude. They don't keep the gears turning, dude. They keep the gears not turning. What's up, King from Oz? Now, if you, like, the patent concept, the way it originally was supposed to, like, work, I will roll with you. The way it's used now is as a, as a, as a de facto crushing of technology and locking up technology to keep lame technology in play. Now, the way, like if, what's the thing where the the information expands every seven years, the patent, the patent situation's not caught up with the way, the way knowledge is expanded. I I can roll with the way the patent system worked a hundred years ago. But in, in today's modern world, it should be abolished. The technology's moving too quick, dude. In fact, you could argue that the patent system's actually slowing technology, man. Moore's Law. Yeah, Moore's Law. So I don't think the patent system's keeping up with Moore's Law. And I think that there's lots of good technology that's just, they just keep renewing the patents and it's stuffed in there and no one knows. And, you know, they just, do their little hocus pocus down there at the at the building, the old building that looks like. Again, I'm gonna go on my. I just want to go on a rant about the buildings, dude. Well, China is just stealing it all. They're reverse engineering it. Yeah, how are we gonna keep up with that? They don't care. The Chinese don't care. Yeah, there you go, dude. Edison used the patent system to steal. Uh, yeah, I, look, man. I'm not afraid of artificial intelligence, dude. I, I'm not on any level. It's, it's, a, it's a misnomer, dude. You gotta be more concerned with the electronic gulags than anything from my take. Yeah, artificial intelligence is a misnomer, dude. It, it, it's it's an undoable proposition, dude. We should all buy an island and create our own reality. So you're gonna start. I let let's look at this. I, I'm not I'm not fully digging in on you. One thousand million dollar fit, one hundred million dollar fit. But li- listen to the statement. We should buy an island and create our own reality. So we're gonna start by using. We're going to start right off the bat with creating our new reality by using money to facilitate the interest-bearing currency scam of buying our own island to start our own reality. How about we just start it right here? How about you be the island? How about you are the island of your own reality? What's that bird? I know. It's okay, buddy. We'll get you through it. You are the island. Like that's the thing, like you are the island. You just start your own reality right now. Just change your perception. It's an ongoing struggle, I get it, man. It's the daily struggle. It's raining, but at least it's not like full windblown rain, dude. No man stay. See, again, I would say that that's a misnomer too. No man is an island. No man stands alone. But the first, the first one, the first man has to stand alone in his own shadow in order to join with the other man who's, who's, who's gotten it together with his own shadow. The, the whole weird thing of, of, of joining the group is, is taking care of your own 
instability first. Like everyone's using the, the no man is an island thing as is, 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 is a destabilizer for group think. Like think, think on your own and work together as a team. I, I agree, we, we as human beings can't do this by ourselves. I'm a big proponent of, of, of we all have to work together. Life's a team sport. But that said, you have to use, you have to get yourself together first. You have to determine your own reality first and, and get it together or you're like, you're just bringing a contagion into the, to the group the group, right? Like the first thing you have to do is admit that you have a problem. Like everybody's got a problem, dude. There's nobody out there who doesn't have a problem. So what's your problem? I'm, I'm pretty in tune with my problem. Spent a lot of time working on it. What is the Bill Gates saying? Israeli technology at Intel processing source choose. I don't know what's, I don't, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, probably after today, birds not fired up to be under the weather. Well, I'm going to, uh, I probably should dedicate some time to the, the bird right now. Anyway, um, links down below. Tomorrow's Turkey Day. We'll probably do a Turkey Day broadcast. Maybe not. Maybe we'll let everyone just like have turkeys in peace. And um, we'll go from there. I'm going to get some, uh, yeah, s s s warm soups. Soup's a tough move at six in the morning, seven in the morning, but I'll do my best. We'll get them, we'll, we'll, we'll get them dialed in, dude. Chris Halberstrom, later skater. All right, everyone have a beautiful afternoon. We got some stuff going on here today. Hopefully I can get the office up and running by the end of the day and get the Wi-Fi going this afternoon. We might do a broadcast this evening once the Wi-Fi is up, dude, because this, this setup here is pretty hoopty, dude. I have to admit, I don't even want to move the phone for fear of losing the signal. So everyone have a beautiful day. Link's down below, and um, hey... Remember, use those name tags, dude.